All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to create a 3D scatter plot. Now, the thing about the 3D scatter plot is that it is not interactive in Minitab in the way that it is in some other programs. Um, I know when I build a 3D scatter plot in R, uh, typically you can rotate it uh, while the graph is still active until you save it as a static thing so that you can choose the, the perspective, but you can't do that in Minitab. So let's look at how to create the 3D scatter plot. So we're going to choose it under the 3D scatter plot option. And you can choose a simple graph or with groups. Now, um, the only real difference here is that in the grouping case, you're going to be able to choose a categorical variable to color code the points. Um, so I'm going to do the one with the groups. But of course, if you do the simple one, you simply won't have the option to add the, that grouping variable. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose three of my variables here. I've selected alcohol, color intensity, and the variable proline. And then my type category is um, only available once I get to that. So again, you can just double click on these or you can list the column numbers um, in order to select a variable to plot. And then when you get to the type one, then not only will the uh, numerical variables appear, but so will any categorical variables. And so I've selected type to be my color coding variable. Now, uh, when it comes to the options, of course, for your labels, you should create a title, of course, uh, if you're gonna save this for other purposes, there is a default title, but, um, giving it your own title is always a good idea. Now, in terms of the data view, they only give you options for project lines or symbols. Um, the project lines may help uh, with that 3D perspective, something to experiment with. I'm gonna stick with just the symbols at this point. And then in terms of the data options, these are typically for, um, how the data is going to uh, categorize. Uh, are you going to use, plot all of the data or you only plot some of the data? Um, how are you going to group it? If you have data that's missing, how does the missing variables get categorized? Um, and then what we're going to do then is we're going to hit OK. And so in this particular 3D scatter plot, it gives us, again, it's a perspective. We have our Y variable that we're plotting is predicted based on these other two variables, color intensity and this proline variable. And then of course they're colored and the shapes are changed according to the type. And, but again, you can't like drag this and rotate it as you can in some programs. So this is a static perspective on this 3D scatter plot. 3D scatter plots can be useful in some cases um, because it allows you to see, again, three relationships between variables. And when we add the category, technically that's four variables. Um, so it has its uses, but um, it's it can sometimes be very difficult to see sort of the perspective, how the three variables are interacting with each other if you can't move the graph around. Um, and so sometimes, it has its its advantages. If they're very spread apart, um, that can be particularly useful. But if they're grouped together in a particular in like these ones are, they they appear to overlap, but it's it's not entirely clear. Um, it sometimes it can just be a little bit too busy, uh, the, and the because of the the perspective, sort of the lack of being able to move it around and interact with it. Um, doesn't really necessarily add as much as we might like. So 3D scatter plots should be used carefully. Uh, generally, a 2D scatter plot is going to be better, even if you are creating a regression equation on two variables predicting a third one, uh, it still may be better to just keep it with the 2D scatter plot so that you can see the relationships clearly. Um, and then leave the 3D scatter plot for those special cases where you can in fact see a clear distinction between the how the variables separate that might be clearer in the 3D perspective than in the 2D perspective. But this is not one of those graphs.